This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with his good friend Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. We're actually going to flip the script a little bit. We're going to talk about 2023, and I'm going to let you lead the discussion. Uh, I love and it. Kind of play some ping pong. So uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, let's do this. So, you know, one of the things that we do is we put together a portfolio. So we're always looking at, hey, what do you think is going to happen in the stock market next year, the bond market, commodity, and real estate? Those are the big four for us. So what we'll do here is just take a look at what your thoughts are. And, and I can kind of, after you give your answer, I can bounce off our answer and just see where we agree or more fun, where we disagree, right? Awesome. I look forward to so, it. Yeah, yeah. So let's start out with the big one. Everyone wants to talk about stocks. So what are your expectations sure. for stocks coming next year? Yeah, so uh, we'll talk about the S&P. The last time I checked this morning, it's at 3950. Uh, I personally believe the stock market's going to have a rough first half. Uh, I see 3500 before I see 4500, for example. Uh, I believe uh, analysts in New York have not cut earnings. I think the S&P 500 expectations is like 228 for earnings or thereabout. Uh, I could see it going as low as 200 or 198. Uh, I just think we have an earnings recession for us. I think this, I think this, finally picks up and consumers retreat. So I see 3,500 first half. Uh, I do think we close higher heading into the year. I think this is a shallow but long recession. Is kind of what I'm looking at. Um, so yeah, assuming we have, assuming we go into the year at 4,000, I think we hit 3,500 first. I think we could be at 41, 42, so three, four, five percent at the end of the year. Uh, but that's what I see for stocks. Yeah, so so I agree. I think that we do finally get this kind of earnings type recession that everyone's been talking about, and the analysts have been so late to the game. So I'm late, getting to. so it's bad, been brutal. It's so been, bad. You and I have been like, guys, come on, come yeah. on. We all know what it's are we coming. doing come here. On. Yeah. So so question for you though on that. Do you yeah. think that much of that has been baked into the price? Whether the analysts in the earnings expectations are willing to admit it, has Wall no. Street said, okay, I don't care what you morons think. We're going to price it accordingly at this point. No. No, I don't think so. I, I think what we've seen is the first leg of a traditional bear market, which is is or, um, compression, Multiple. Uh, right? Yep. Multiple compression. Uh, I think we've seen very little earnings compression. We've seen a lit. I mean, no, the answer is no. And I don't think it's happened yet. No. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I think that you have seen the massive multiple compression and where you had the just ridiculous expansion in multiples was in those big high flying tech names, right? I mean, look at Tesla. Tesla is being eviscerated in the market right now. And you can't trade at 200 times multiple. Like it doesn't work that way. At some point when the air gets let out of your sale, you go from that high flying tech name to the mediocre name or, or bottom of the barrel name that they're experiencing this year. And that's one of the things that, that we've preached about throughout our you know, life as portfolio managers is like, listen, you have to understand growth stocks have more risk in them than value stocks do. Because when they get re-rated, a growth stock has a high multiple. There's only so low a multiple on value stocks that are already yeah. moderate can go. So the downside, there's more of a margin for safety there. So anyway, but I guess yeah. at the end of the day, I agree with you. I think it'll be a mediocre year for stocks at the end of the year. I think you'll have a lot of volatility towards the beginning of the year because I do think this earnings recession is coming. And I think we're going to have to chew through that and understand coming out of the other side of it. Where are the chips going to fall? Who's able to weather this storm better than some others? And I think that you have a big dispersion in stocks yes. next year. Yeah, I, I will uh, reiterate something I stole or read or interpreted from BlackRock uh, here in the last four or five days. Basically, my interpretation of a BlackRock article is, hey, the last 40 years, uh, kind of passive investing has been OK. I think the next two, three years are going to be active, active investors. Uh, meaning specific companies versus you know the S and P, the Qs, or, sure. or whatever. I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's what happens when rates revert back upward. Exactly. Back when the cost of capital goes from zero to being something more meaningful, the actual quality separates. The from winners the win. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly win. right. And it's yeah. funny, BlackRock. I, I'll commend them. They have done a. Put it this way. Most people on Wall Street are perma bulls. They're paid to be perma bulls. They want people putting money into their product. BlackRock's actually been relatively conservative. They've had a nice. relatively negative outlook, and, I was, and I've been surprised about that. Nice. I did not know that. Cool. All right. Bonds. What do you think happens in bonds next year? 
So for me, bonds are, for me, again, I, I run a levered business, right? Real estate's a levered business. So I've been looking at the 10 year for a long time. Uh, I haven't checked today. I think it's a, let's call it three, five. Am I close? Yep. Ballpark. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think the, the range for the 10 year notes pretty tight next year. Uh, I'll call it three, three, five to three, seven. Uh, yep, I, I think we've time. seen, okay. yep. I, yeah, I've, I think we've seen the great gyrations over. I think the Fed's closer to being done. Uh, so it's going to, it's going to be kind of, I, I, I believe the Fed, they're going to get us to 5%. Uh, and then they're going to stay put for 2023. Yep. I do not see a cut even in Q4. So if that's true, I think we, I think we get to a point and I think these crazy up and downs really mellow out are my yeah. thoughts. Yep. And I, 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 I think you're right there. I think that, you know, as the end destination is further away, yeah, the certainty just... is so much wider that the bang around that you've seen in bonds. So like a couple stats though on bonds, and I'll talk not just about treasuries, but about more broadly, the Barclays okay. aggregate, which is just the, the call it the S and P 500 of bonds. Okay. Yeah. So, so right now that's down about 12% for the year. So mm. Negative 12%. The worst year, the, the Barclays Ag came out in 1976. So it's about okay. 50 years old. The worst year it's ever had since that time frame is negative 3%. Ooh. So we're at a four time multiple, four <laughs> times as Ouch. bad as it's ever been over the past 50 years. Right. So because of that, I think we've gotten ahead of ourselves. I think we actually get it above average year for bonds and potentially a significantly above average return mm. for, for a couple of reasons. One, you start out with a much higher yield to begin with. Yeah, so the year just starts different. Yeah. Yeah, your coupon, your your and 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 again, it's not guaranteed because whatever, but your assumed rate of return is at least the coupon. Your assumed rate of return starts significantly higher, and so that helps from that standpoint. And then I think what you do is you get a compression in bond yields. When is the best time to own bonds on a relative basis to stocks mm -hmm. during a recession, right? Yeah. And so if we do go into recession, what happens is there's a flight to quality. Bonds are that quality asset, and what you have is some compression in that space and in, in, in yields driving prices higher on bonds. And mm -hmm. I think that next year is a year where you likely get a fairly significant amount um, more than the average return of bonds. And think of average return around 4.8%. I think okay. you can get high single, even if touching you know low double-digit returns out of bonds next year. So what I think you're saying, again, is a novice in this space. I personally never looked at the Barclays ag, wouldn't even know where to look it up. Uh, yep, I like, think what you're so saying- Just a, a ticker like AGG, like ag, okay. aggregate. AGG is just an easy way to look at that. Okay. I've never looked at it. I'll, I'll look at it later. Uh, basically, I think what you're saying, is, or what I'm seeing out there, and you and I've had this discussion, I think a month ago, I, somebody who's now 50 years old, have never considered buying bonds. Yeah, yeah. You and yeah. I had that conversation. Damn, yep. four or five on a freaking two year. Give me yep. some of that, right? Yep. So I think what you're going to see a lot of next year is people going, yeah, I'll take, the, I'll just take the coupon. So I think. And by the way, what's that do to stocks? Oh, that cash comes out, stocks go down. Yeah. 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 So that's another weight on the shoulder of stocks when, you totally know, the, agree. the, 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 the uh, acronym that everyone was utilizing was TINA. There is no alternative to stocks, right? When, when the 10 years trading at yeah. one six or whatever it is, you're right. Didn't it, I'm didn't good. It I'm bottom not at that. like 0. 0.66 or something stupid. Or was yeah, that the oh, it got down stupid low. I, I don't remember exactly, but you're exactly right. It, I mean, so oh, now there is yeah. an alternative and that mm -hmm. puts pressure on the, on the stock market yeah, as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, if a guy like me, who's never, ever thought, even thought about it, it's like, damn, what is that website to go buy 10 grand in yeah, inflation yeah, exactly tips, right. in tips? Yeah. It's crazy. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to go in another analogy, but I think everyone's got it at this point. So All real right. estate. Yeah. So real estate, uh, again, I love to talk to me about national median home price. Uh, I'm going to call it flat. Um, again, if, if you look at what's going on in Phoenix or Sacramento or Austin, you know, there's Vegas, there are some markets in sure. big trouble. They'll go down 15 or 20%, but that's not the nation. I think I buyers distort it on the up and they will distort on the bottom. Uh, I think nationally speaking, uh, it's going to be a flat year. I think we've got, I think in two years, we saw the decade of appreciation. And I think the next five years will be basically flat and flat for me is plus or minus 1%. And, um, yeah, I, I just see it being a boring year. And part of that's because I think rates drop. I think six, I think we could have 30 year mortgage rates sub 6%, maybe in Q1. 
Yep. And I think yep. 6% is a psychological number and consumers are very predictable. When rates went up, everybody was saying, I'm not going to buy because I used to get 4%. Now right. when rates go down, they're going to say, I'm going to buy now because it's not seven and a half. Correct. Yep. So, and again, the last thing I'll say about real estate, one of the reasons I say flat is because unlike everybody else in the game who's calling, there are people calling Taylor 15 to 20% drop next year. I believe what they're fundamentally missing is the demand curve is shifted. Yep. For a decade, we did 6 million transactions. I believe we're going to do sub four. That's a 25, 30% whack. So yep. I'm going to call sub 4 million total transactions and a flat median for the nation. Yep. And, I, and I'll just agree with you there. I think that early in the year, you probably get continued dip. And then I think you move on the other side. And my reason was exactly what you said there is, and it goes back to my bond comments before, I think rates come down. So I think they bring mortgage rates down with them. And I think it creates, you know, a higher level of affordability than was there, you know, now. And oh, by the Not way, wages are going up 5% a year. So, I mean, eventually this just works itself out. Yep. So last one, commodities. What are your thoughts there? That's a really interesting one because- And that's again, a broad topic too. So, you, I mean, if you want to say like, hey, oil, if you want to do that, that's perfectly yeah, fine no, as well. But Yeah, thank you for the out. No, I, I think commodities are a worldwide thing. I think we're going through deglobalization. I think China's in a recession, although they'll never tell us that. I think Europe's in a recession. I think the US is going to have a shallow, I mean, it's a worldwide. So I think commodities, generally speaking, are down. Um, you know, and it's kind of like stocks. They may start coming back in Q4. Because again, I think this recession is a you know 11, 12, 13 months. I think it could start in Q4. Um, although the uh, Atlanta Fed predictor is like at three percent positive, which is kind of wild. So we'll see. So yeah, I think I think commodities, generally speaking, are um, coming off the boil. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that that's the the right assessment. I think you'll con continue to see uh, them precipitate downwards as they have over the last six months now. But I think the difference is I think that they start to rebound a little bit before you do, just because okay. I think that they have started down and, and have yeah. exacerbated down to a much more meaningful extent than stocks have. A lot of commodities are off fifty percent from their highs, five zero yeah. percent, and, and a lot of them have taken a pretty significant dip in December. Oh yeah, they they've gotten beaten up badly just recently. So um, we'll see what what winds up playing out there. But I think that you get a a probably a, another gap downwards here in Q1, and I think things start to moderate through Q2, and then may come back on the other end in Q3, Q4. And I will say the exception to that is gold. I do expect a, a solid year out of gold next year. Yeah, I think um, so. I, I think point. as the dollar comes in, gold will go up. I think. Yeah, yeah I don't. Yep, and especially I, if we hit that economic hardship as well. Yeah, when I when I think commodities, actually, I don't even put gold in that. Because I think yep. that's an investment, but that's yep, nope, perfectly fair. Uh, oil's been absolutely hammered. hammered Is it under? Hammered. It's like seventy-two or something, right? Something yeah, like I that? mean, lumber, lumber's down. Now, granted, lumber had a massive run-up, but yeah, it's probably down seventy-five, eighty percent. Yeah, something like I think that. So. Speak. crazy. Yikes! Yeah, this is amazing stuff. Well, Taylor, do me a favor. Where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments on Instagram at Life Goal Investments. Appreciate awesome. you, Michael. Thank you, buddy.